hey guys good evening and thanks for joining so in the today class our main course or content will start as per cyber security syllabus so first topic is networking concepts in networking concepts once again first topic is osi layers okay it is one of the very 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 important inter questions not only that one how the communication will happen basically why osi layers will be used for communication purpose in between two devices or peer to peer devices or maybe user to application or user to server or user to database or user to website vice versa okay so this voice layers importance is communication purpose so let's start now so as i said yesterday you can see here there are two different types of devices this is one device and this is another device so this is called one peer device this is called another peer device if you want to peer is nothing but neighbor peer means neighbor if one peer wants to communicate another peer in that scenario it will use couple of protocols so protocols in the rules and regulations along with nodes finally one peer is able to communicate to another peer and communication channel will form this communication channel is nothing but voice layer communication this voice layer communication is introduced by iso so iso in 1984 iso full form is international standard organization that particular organization voice layer concept so why will use voice layer concept mainly for communication in between two devices not only two devices more than two devices also so how we can define this one in 1984 iso iso full form is international standard organization proposed one of the communication channel concept that communication channel is nothing but voice layer concept okay so that is about uh, iso and also what exactly it will do so communication channel meaning here in between two devices if they want to communicate it will follow couple of protocols guidelines along with node okay so finally peers can be communicated so that communication channel is nothing but voice layer communication give me one second i will reduce the font okay so that is about voice layer concept voice layer concept is introduced by iso in 1984 so as per voice layers we have seven layers are there so from the entry point of view whenever you are specifying how many voice layers are there could you please explain this is the way how they will ask in that scenario you have to specify the correct format if you want to mention the top to bottom you have to say top to bottom otherwise bottom to top what is mean by top to bottom and bottom to top so top to bottom meaning here layer 7 to layer 1 bottom to top means layer 1 to layer 7 okay so that is the difference you have to clearly specify so there are seven voice layers are there as per voice i or is 1984 i am explaining about top to bottom or i am explaining about bottom to top then you have to continue this is the way how to you have to give the answer so most of the cases will explain from top to bottom the reason behind this one why top to bottom i will explain so layer number first one after that layer name 
after the description of the respect to layer then data format the data format also called as a pdu protocol data unit and finally each and every attack sorry each and every layer what type of attacks we will see okay so this is the table i created before our class has been started so then we can go and we can discuss about all those seven layers there are seven ys layers so i'll explain from top to bottom layer number 7 to layer number 1 so first layer number is layer 7 layer name is application here so when you say application any website basically maybe consider your youtube or maybe consider facebook or maybe tcs.com or maybe twitter or instagram anything so that is called application or website so take example facebook.com itself so why will use facebook.com or why will use twitter.com what is the reason behind this one anyone what is the importance of twitter or facebook anyone what is the reason why you are using communicate to, communicate to each other communicate the communication purpose are you sure <laughs> we are now we are discussing about communication that's why you are saying communication i think uh, we can share the different ideas are kegar yes we are we can share the different ideas so there are different purpose basically one is entertainment purpose one is maintaining the friend list one is posting some of the photos as well as videos whenever you are visiting any new place so these are different possible reasons so basically any application you can consider not only just facebook you can consider youtube also you are uploading couple of youtube videos or maybe you are downloading couple of videos so every application or every website why we will use to provide information to other people or to get the information from other people either to provide the information or to get the information example maybe you visited so and so country or so and so place you will take the couple of photos you will post in the facebook or maybe instagram or maybe youtube in that scenario nothing but you are providing information to whoever is there in your friend list and also who your friends are there in your friend list they will also post something to you then you can see that information meaning here either to get the information or to provide the information we will use application any application you can take example you are applying one of the job in wipro.com so you are providing your job application to the wipro company okay so what is the definition we have to say now to provide or get information we will use application layer that is the definition so data format as per application layer is a data only data format as per application layer is data only okay attacks anyone what are the different types of attacks will come application layer yesterday we discussed what are the different types of attacks will come in application layer Most layer number 7 attacks perfect oasp top 10 oasp top 10 attacks example sql injection attack cross site scripting attack broken authentication broken access control insufficient logging and monitoring cryptographic design failures okay csrf attack there are so many so all those attacks will fall under application layer attacks which tool we can use to detect and block this particular ys top 10 attacks which tool it will prevent and block the ys top 10 attacks or application layer 7 attacks uh web application firewall i guess perfect web application firewall that's correct answer even next generation firewall all basic partially okay partially next generation firewall or firewall okay full fledged is web application firewall that's correct so now coming back so for application wise there are different types of protocols we will use first one is web browsing so first feature of application layer is web browsing so web browsing we will use two different types of protocols what are those those two different types of protocol for web browsing web browsing we access to any website or application 
So web browsing purpose, nothing but accessing any website or application. We will use web browsing application. One is HTTP 80 and HTTPS 443. Okay. So out of these two, always we have to use HTTPS. Why? Because it's a secure way of communication. Okay. So if you're in HTTP, more chances are there from the hacker point of view. Attacker will hack our applications. It will not provide HTTP. If you are using HTTP, basically, it will not provide confidentiality. It will not provide the privacy. It will not provide the non reputation. It will not provide authenticity as well. Okay. So that's why we always we have to use HTTPS. If we want to use HTTPS on top of the server, wherever we are hosting the application, for that one, we have to purchase one of the certificate. That certificate is called as SSL TLS certificate. SSL TLS certificate. For example, you can see here right now, one of the lock symbol is there. So this lock symbol, if I'm clicking on, it is a connection is secure. That means Google company, docs.google.com right now I'm accessing. So if I'm clicking on connection is secure, now certificate is validate. That means, this certificate on top of the Google server, it is hosted wherever application is deployed. Okay, Google company, they purchased one of the SSL TLS certificate from where you can see GTSCA. GTSCA, it's one of the vendor, Google Trust Services vendor. Okay, so they purchased the certificate and finally on top of the Google server, wherever this website is designed, so they deploy this particular certificate. Okay, once they put, they deploy the certificate, back end it will use a couple of keys. There are two different types of keys we will use. One is public key and one is private key. Public and private key. So these keys will be exchanged between our web browser, nothing but we are a client, and back end server. Who is back end server in this scenario? Docs.google.com is a back end server. We cannot see back end process, whatever it is happening. Only we can see front end, how to access the application. Example, you can see one more, facebook.com. So this one of the website or application. Here also Facebook using, okay, lock symbol, nothing but they purchased SSL TLS certificate. Whatever right now I'm discussing, it is a cryptography concept, part of application security. Everything is a cryptography concept. Once I'm clicking on this one, once I can just showing connection is secure. Click on this connection and secure and certificate is valid. Certificate is valid meaning here it is not expired yet. That is called certificate is valid. So once you are clicking on this one, now Facebook, you can see from where they purchased the certificate, DZ set. DZ set. From DZ set is one of the third party vendor. From there, they purchased this particular certificate. So once they purchased on top of the server, wherever this Facebook application is hosted, they deployed the certificate. So now I accessed facebook.com. For this one, it will use crop of cryptography algorithm, symmetric and asymmetric. I'm going too much in depth, don't worry. I'm going too much in depth. All these things we'll discuss. It's a part of application security. Okay, so if I'm accessing www.facebook.com, in between my web browser of the Google Chrome and also backend Facebook server, it will exchange the communication using keys. Those keys are public and private key. Finally, so even attacker is trying to, okay, so hack our web browser or application, he cannot hack it. Why? Because he cannot break the connection because he doesn't know about keys, whatever we are using. Password, he doesn't know. Okay, so that is about HTTPS. That's why HTTPS is always is a secure one as compared to HTTP. HTTP is plain text, HTTPS is encrypted text with keys. This entire question. So web browsing protocols are these two, HTTP and HTTPS. One is HTTPS port number is 80 and HTTPS is 443. We'll discuss once again in depth analysis.
next one application layer also we can use for messaging purpose messaging purpose so what is messaging nothing but sending a email or receiving email that is also one of the message or maybe doing the chat in okay microsoft teams or slack channel or any other channel that is also one of the possible reason okay so there are different types of messaging protocols we will use for messaging purpose one is smtp application layer has a capability of even messaging also first one is smtp protocol so port number is 25 so smtp protocol also called as email server or maybe xin server or maybe unified communication server or maybe office 365 outlook 365 Okay, there are different names are there basically. So port number is twenty five. SMTP full form is Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. Okay. Next one is POP three. So POP three means there are three different types of versions are there under Post Office Protocol. So POP is nothing but Post Office Protocol. So three means version number, version number like advanced version. So Port number is one ten. Port number is one ten. So we have a separate topic. Is there ports and protocol? There we will discuss once again all these. So post office protocol name itself it is it's the post office. So why will is post office to receive the letters as well as to send the letters communication purpose. That's why it's a messaging protocol. So this word or maybe acronym came from post office. Okay. So that is second protocol. Next one is IMAP, Internet Message Protocol, Internet Message Access Protocol, Internet Message Access Protocol. Okay, Internet Message Access Protocol meaning here, if you want to get the internet, we use one of the protocol. That protocol name is IMAP. Okay, so port number is one forty three. One forty three. Next one is ICMP. so icmp internet control messaging protocol so if you want to see whether opposite device is up or down or active or inactive or active or passive you will use one of the command what is that command what is that command if you want to see whether opposite device or person or server or system is up or down So we will use one of the command. That command will be used by S A I C M P protocol. What is that command name? What is that ping. command name? Ping. Yes, perfect answer. Ping, ping command. command. Ping command. P I N G. Practically, also I have so I have shown. Okay. So if I are using example, yeah, this one, this one only. So ping. Google dot com. So whenever we discuss initially. so that time explained so now you can see here response is coming back from google server now according to this one now we can say google server is up and running up and running it is in active state it is not in a passive state so destination is reachable so what are ping we are using this for messaging purpose okay so it will is icmp protocol what is the port number what is the port number What is the port number for ICMP? What is the port number for ICMP? No port number, sir. Yeah, no port number. It is a service. There is no port number. Correct. That's why given all this definition initially itself. Okay. So there is no port number. It is completely service. Okay. so that is that is about messaging protocols not only this one there are so many messaging protocols we have so sir, these what, are here what is meant by service sir service meaning here that messaging how it will go so in this scenario back end it will use messaging so from my system trace route it will happen so nothing but in this scenario how it will go so i will give one more comment trace rt google.com so wherever right now i am sitting that particular position to it will go to the default gateway router nothing but whatever act fiber net i am using it will go to default gateway router 
default gateway router it will go to the internet or public from there it will go to other hubs or other routers then finally it will reach to the google server so that's why this is service oriented protocol it's a messaging oriented protocol that is mean by service basically so there are it will give total type 0 to type 255 messages that we can see later that mean by service so now in between me nothing but laptop to google server these many routers are there these many routers are there okay so this is the way how that service is going on our message is going on so this comment also we will use or we'll discuss in future trace route it's one of the popular entry question okay so that is about uh, messaging protocols next one is virtual terminal this is also one of the function will be done by application layer so virtual terminal terminal meaning here so there is no need to use physical cable connection example you, example you are supporting for one of the sbi bank you are supporting for one of the sbi bank from wipro so where is our headquarters of sbi bank is located mumbai so mumbai headquarter okay so data center is there in sbi bank so if you want to log into any server will you go to the respective mumbai location and also data center and will you log in from there using physical cable connection it is a time consuming it's a complicated it's a completely robust and also it is very travel is involved lot of time loss also so in this scenario what our server is located in the mumbai location of sbi bank if i want to log in from here itself through remotely or through virtually i will log in so that is called virtual terminal for this one we will use couple of protocols example ssh ssh so ssh full form is secure shell so why will is ssh what the importance of ssh uh, to, to log secure into the, the to log into the operating system yeah to log into the unix operating system or linux operating system with your secure way of communication that's correct port number is 22 so now i will use putty application so putty if you want to log into any linux server we will use putty application so here i'll specify the whatever server i want to log in sbi bank mumbai location that ip address of the server and default port already showing as a 22 and i will click on login button so ip address of the server or host name of the server and click on login button so once i'm clicking on login button it will ask server username and password then i have to enter the username and password then it will log into the server so virtually I am logging now. That's why it is called virtual terminal. I'm not going to physical location of the Mumbai data center and through cable connection, I'm not logging. So sitting in the remote location through virtual terminal, I'm logging to the server. So that's why we'll use SSH and also it's a part of virtual terminal. Not only that one, we have one more protocol is there. Anyone, if you want to log into Windows operating system, which one we have to use? Windows. We can have RDP. Perfect. Remote RDP. Desktop. Yeah, remote desktop. So remote desktop and port number is double three eight nine. This also I have shown practically now. So you can click on search button here and click on remote desktop. Okay. So now I'll click on the remote desktop. Then I have to enter same thing either server of the windows server or maybe host name also so once i'm entering the respective ip address or host name and click on connect then it will ask username and password then virtually i'm logging respect to windows server through remotely i no need to go to the physical location of the wherever server is located virtually we are configuring or virtually we are accessing so that is called virtual terminal so 3389 is a port number if you don't open this 3389 port number from your system or my system we cannot access the server 
if you want to open the port number 3389, so we have to give a request to firewall team. So firewall team will open the port number from my IP or my system to respect to whatever server I am trying to access. That we can discuss parts of ports and protocols. Ports and protocols. So these two will fall under virtual terminal. It's a part of application layer. Next one is file transfer. File transfer. Even if you want to transfer the file from one system to another system, or maybe you want to upload the file to maybe Google Drive or OneDrive or any other website. Transferring the file from one system to another system, or maybe uploading file from your system to the respective website. Okay. In that scenario, we will use FTP, file transfer protocol. Port number is 20 and 21. So client side is 20 and server side is 21. And also we will use SFTP also. So file transfer is protocol is not a secure one, but SFTP protocol is a secure one. Secure file transfer protocol. Interior question also. What is the difference between FTP and SFTP? FTP not a secure way of file transfer. SFTP is a secure way of file transfer. That is the difference. And port number is 22, similar to like SSH. Similar to like SSH. Okay. Next one is we have NFS, NFS, network file share system, network file share system. There is no port number. We have to connect through LAN or maybe through so Wi-Fi connectivity network. Network means local area network or wide area network or metropolitan area network. So this is not a protocol. It's a network. That's why there is no port number. So example, every organization till 2015, they are using a dedicated file server in their organization or company. Once cloud came into the picture, they are not at all using any physical server, physical file server. Now everybody is using OneDrive or Google Drive because it's a very cheap and best cost. That's why. Okay. So now there is no more file servers. Most of the organization, they are not using file servers. Yes, couple of companies, yes, they are using, but couple of companies completely, they are using Google Drive or OneDrive and they are uploading the files there itself because of the cost point of view, because of the access point of view. Why? Because in file server, we will put everything there itself. It's centralized file server or centralized storing of the file server or files. Not only our cybersecurity SOC related files we will upload there or copy there, even DevOps team, HR team, legal team, your personal files, okay, data science team, everybody will store there itself. Lot of people, what they will do, they will try to access other team files also. It is illegitimate activity. Okay, so that is the reason nowadays everyone is using. So completely OneDrive or Google Drive and so on, it's cheap and best to us and also for access point of view. Next one is a, even couple of other protocols also will fall under application layer, DNS. DNS full form is domain name system or domain name server, domain name system or domain name server. So what exactly this DNS will do, it will convert domain name into IP address. We have separate topic is there for this one. Okay. Example, if I'm giving google.com here, so this google.com back and it will convert to 8.8.8.8 or 8.8.4.4. Once it will convert, then back and it will go to the ISP router, ISP router to back end internal Okay, primary DNS server of the Google company. And finally, we are able to access the google.com wherever it is hosted. That one I will explain later. It is a network architecture diagram. Okay, then you'll, you will clear cut about what is, how the domain name resolution will happen. So whenever we are giving any IP, sorry, any domain name, it will convert the domain name into IP address. 
backend IP address. So maybe you can ask directly, why can't we give IP address here instead of google.com? Yes, we can give that one also, not a problem. But how many IP addresses will you, will you remember as a human being? In our organization, maybe 200 applications we are using. So whether you will remember each and every application domain name or IP address, it's very difficult. As compared to remembering the number, we can remember domain name easily. Okay, so that's why for every IP address, we can give the host name or domain name or fully qualified domain name that we can see later. So port number is 53. Enter a question. What is the DNS port number? What is the answer? 53. Next one is DHCP. So DHCP full form is Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. So what this DHCP server will do, it will assign the IP address automatically some specific period of time. That specific period of time we can call least time, least time. So even we can take the buildings for rent lease. We can take the shops for leasing purpose. Even we can take any farming related like a crops if you want to do. Couple of farmers, they will take lease one year or two years, three years and so on, right? So leasing here, DHCP server also, you will give the IP address for leasing time only, not permanently, some specific period of time. That time is called as lease time, okay? So DHCP server will allocate IP address automatically. There is no human being is required. There is no human intervention is required. Meaning here, when I say there is no human intervention, a new human being, dedicated person is not required. Dedicated person is not required. Maybe take example, Vipro Gachibali. How many people are working more than 50,000 or more than 40,000 or more, more than 30,000? So if you want to assign the IP address statically or maybe manually, so 10 to 20 members team is required. 10 to 20 persons are required to assign the IP address statically or manually. So if you are using DHCP server, there is no need of manual process. Everything automatically we will assign. It's like automation basically. Once user is connecting to Wi-Fi or LAN, so this DHCP server will assign IP address automatically based on whatever empty free slot is available. That is called DHCP server. So port number is 67 from client side, nothing but your laptop side, 68 is from client side, so server side, 67 and 68. For assigning the IP address, so DHCP server will use one of the process. That process is called as a DORA process, D-O-R-A, DORA, entire question. For assigning the IP address automatically using DHCP server, it will assign, it will use some of the process. That process we can call it as a DORA. DORA. DORA means discover, offer, request, and every server. Please remember all these. So, next one we have SSL. So, SSL port number is 443 because HTTPS will use SSL protocol. So HTTPS will use SSL protocol. So SSL port number is also 443. TLS, transport layer security. Even HTTPS will use TLS protocol. So what the port number, anyone? What the port number? Even as I said, TLS is a subset of HTTPS. So what is the port number now? Yes, perfect. 443. Yeah, 443. 443. Yeah, so yes. SSL, so TLS and SSL is a subset of HTTPS. That's why I said SSL TLS certificate. SSL TLS certificate. So nothing but whatever certificate we are using, 
or whatever certificate we are deploying on top of the server, it will use both protocols. One is SSL, second is TLS. So SSL is outdated one. Now we are not at all using SSL. We are using now TLS. So TLS also we are using 1.3 and also 1.2. Okay. So the, forget about this one, we will discuss later. So that is about overall application layer. That is about overall application layer. So layer number is seven as per OSA. Layer name is application. And what the description of the application layer we can define. So it can provide the information or it can queue the information. So related to different types of processes, one is web browsing side, one is messaging side, one is virtual terminal side, one is file transfer side. Okay. So next one is the data format is data only. Okay. Then attacks in application layer, VASP top 10. Not only this one, there are a lot of other attacks also will come. MITM, man in the middle attack. SAN stop 25. Similar to like a OSP, even SANS also one of the institution or organization, they will conduct some survey and finally they will make top 25 related attacks. But it is not that much popular as compared to OSP top 10. Okay. So as I said earlier also, 98% of the organizations out of 100, they will use OSP top 10 related. So attacks only. So nothing but they will take care of all those preventive mechanisms. So that is about overall application layer. So whatever attacks are there in the application layer, if you want to block or if you want to prevent, we will use web application firewall. Otherwise, we will use next generation firewall. We will use web application firewall or next generation firewall. But unfortunately, next generation firewall doesn't have the full pledged capability, but it will do basic capability. It will do basic capability. So second layer as per OSI. From top to bottom, it is layer number six. Presentation layer. Presentation layer. So presentation layer, how we can define it will convert one form of data into another form of data. Why it has to convert for understanding purpose. Okay, what is the presentation layer definition? It will convert one form of data into another form of data. So what is the reason to convert this particular format? So the reason behind this one for understanding purpose or easy way of communication purpose. Okay, so that is the definition. It will convert one form of data into another form of data. So that is called presentation layer. Presentation importance. So data format is data only once again. Data format is data only because format. So that format may be different in, in the form of data only. So here also, whatever application layer attacks will come, same thing is applicable to here as well. Meaning here, OAS top 10, man in the middle attack, MITM, even SANS top 25 also. Okay, so these are all the at attacks from the uh, presentation layer side. Now, what is the depth or in-depth analysis of converting one form of data into another form of data? So, what is mean by that one? Example. Encryption and decryption. Okay, so that is one of the example. Second one is even data compression. All these are features. Even encoding and decoding. So all these are examples too. So one form of data will be converted into another form of data. So example. So encryption, 
encryption meaning here the plain text data can be converted into encrypted data using some of the algorithms or maybe using password or key that is called encryption we already discussed encryption whenever we are discussing it is nothing but so providing one of the key or password that is called encryption i already told you a couple of examples also downloading the aadhar card or downloading your bank statement or downloading your credit card statement all those right so whatever aadhar card or maybe bank statements respect to banks they are providing they will encrypt the data using the password or key first four letters of your name and also date of birth we will enter and we will download and we can see that plain text data so one form of encrypted data we are converting into another form of data so that's why encryption decryption will fall under presentation layer enter a question encryption will fall under which layer what the answer what the answer presentation layer presentation layer layer number 7 you are right presentation layer layer number 6 sir layer number 6 okay in this similar way the data compression will come under which layer layer number 6 presentation layer so in voice layer itself i can make more than 1000 entire questions in voice layer concept itself i can make more than 1000 entire questions so any way they will ask the questions in different ways they will ask the questions okay so you know what is encryption what is decryption already i provide abbreviation so please go and read that particular de definition in decryption also i provided so the process of converting so encrypted data into plain text data using some of the password or key that is called decryption so mathematically encryption decryption it is one way function or two way function two way function okay. two way function that's correct reverse is possible reverse is possible encryption opposite is decryption mathematically it is two way function reverse is possible so next one is data compression so whatever file example maximum capacity of the gmail if you want to send an any email i think it's a 5 mb only more than 5 mb file we cannot send it i think 2 mb or 5 mb i forgot so more than 2 mb file or more than 5 mb file we can't send it from gmail then what you will do drive drive we'll use drive google yes. drive yeah. no that is okay we will compress the data we will give right yeah, click we'll yeah seven g per zipping we can do then we can compress the data compress the file we can give option yeah google drive and everything is fine that's correct so we'll compress the data using zip or seven g these are all the couple of options we will use so that is called data compression compressing of the data is called data compression one form of data we are converting into another form of data before data compression is one data and after data compression is another data so one form of data we are converting into another form of data so that's why data compression will come under layer number 6 presentation layer encoding and decoding so encoding opposite this decoding decoding opposite is encoding so why we have to use this encoding and decoding for structured format for usability format for reading format but it will not provide any security encryption will provide security because we are in password or key but encoding and decoding so just for usable format or readable format or structured format or scheme of the format so that is so data compression means compressing of the data so encoding meaning here for easy way of reading and usability purpose we will encode using structured format or scheme so example we discussed common event format what is mean common event format cef did we discuss cef or not did we discuss cef common event format abbreviation 
abbreviation of terminology cf full form is common event form it is one of the interior question i told you so different types of log formats sm tool will not, will not understand so different types of log formats can be converted into means sm tool understandable format that is called common event format same thing here also okay couple of formats we can't understand that scheme we will use for reading purpose that is called encoding and also decoding but encoding and decoding it's not at all security so because we are not using any okay so password or key but encryption decryption we are using key so all these will fall under so presentation layer not only this one i will give a couple of other examples also decimal to binary what do you mean decimal to binary anyone decimal to binary zero, can zero you give one of the example simple code to machine level code yes correct so decimal number to machine understandable computer language is called binary format computer will not understand decimal format it will understand only binary format so binary format numbers are two either zero or one so example if you want to convert 10 10 is a decimal number or not yes sir. 10 is a decimal number or not yes yes sir. yes so if you want to convert this 10 decimal number into binary number what the answer we studied zero, in the engineering first year. Yeah. One zero one. One zero one zero. You one are zero. right. Yes. Yeah, one zero one zero. So nothing but one form of the decimal data we are converting into another form of binary data. So that is the presentation layer definition. One more form of data we are converting to another form of data. One more example. ASCII to EBCDIC. So as ASCII to EBCDIC. So ASCII is related to computer. One sec, American standard based coding language into EBCDIC, European based. Okay. American based to European based. So American coding language we are converting into European based coding language. So that is called one map of one form of data we are converting to another form of data. Not only this one, there are so many examples. Hexadecimal to binary. What may hexa? How much hexa means? Six. 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 Sixteen. Yeah. So binary to decimal. So all these are example guys. Okay, so that is about overall layer number six, that is called presentation layer. So entire question is encryption and decryption will come under which layer? That is the entire question. Yeah. yeah, layer number six, it is a presentation layer, entire question. So next one, layer number five. Okay, sorry for the interrupt. Yes, Instead please. Yeah, yes, actually, please. Actually, uh, yeah, as per the definition, like uh, here we are trying to convert the one data. Uh, one form, sorry, one, one form of data into another form. form. Yeah. yeah. Another form, correct, right? Mm. But uh, in all the cases, it is working, right? But in the case of the data compression, mm. so here data won't be changed. Only here we are trying to uh, like uh, reduce the size of the data. That's it. When we can yeah, the yeah. encryption decryption where. Mm. Yeah, go ahead. Go Sorry. ahead. Uh, when we consider the encryption decryption case, where we are mm -hmm. trying to add some extra data, mm -hmm. is that uh, actual data plus extra data we are trying to add? Uh, we are not add, encoding, adding any extra. Also. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. We are not okay. adding any extra data here. We are pro providing one key. That's all. We are providing one password to that particular data. Here, before compression is one data. See, maybe before compression that file size is 500 kb after compression maybe 250 kb that size of the data is reduced or not buffer yeah. overflow is happening yeah, or yeah. not so that data yeah. size for yeah, format to, is changing yeah, yeah. Sorry. size changing also is called sorry. as format yeah so binary numbers is changing basically yeah 
Yeah, except that the remain all cases uh, the yeah. data also going to be changed. Mm. Like suppose decimal to binary. Previously we have ten. Then yeah. after converting it will be like. So don't think zero, about zero, data here. Format you binary. can think. Format. Okay. So format we have yes. to think. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Sir. Welcome. So next layer is layer number five. That is called session layer. Session layer. It is also one of the important layer. So session layer mainly used for managing the sessions. So managing the sessions. Example, maybe you are accessing Facebook and you are making one of the video call. How many sessions are there in the video call? One or two or three. You are making one of the WhatsApp video call. Otherwise, how many sessions will be there? Two sessions. Only How one. Many, only one. Two. Are you sure? Two sessions. Two I sessions. Know, what are those two sessions? two sessions? Radio, Radio is the receiver and one is the source. source yes, to desk. correct. So there are two sessions. One is audio, nothing but speaking purpose. Second one is video for seeing each other. There are two sessions basically. So here it will do session management. Feature is session management. Managing of the session management is managing of the session. Example: Facebook video call, or Skype video call, or Microsoft Teams video call, or maybe even example as I said, WhatsApp video call also. Second one is authentication. Third one is authorization. So session is establishing between you and also back end server. Take Facebook example itself. Why I am giving always Facebook example because everybody is aware of Facebook. That's why. Okay. So session management meaning here. So it's one session or two sessions or more than two sessions also. Example WhatsApp video call. One session is belongs to audio, and one session is belongs to video. So that is about session management. Next one is authentication. Whenever you are accessing any website or application, so in between you as a user or client to the backend server, one connection will be established. Session will be formed. So authentication is from user side or server side. User side. Server side. Server side. Are you sure? What is authentication? What is the definition user of side. authentication? User, user side. side. User side. Providing the credentials. Who am I? Who am I? Yeah, correct. So providing the credentials, username and password. Who am I? Identity of the user. That is called authentication. That's why I provide all those definitions initially. Okay. So here, identity of the user or client. Who am I? Right. So and also providing the credentials. So next one is authorization. What is authorization? Who will do authorization? Backend from the backend. Backend server. Backend server will see whether this user can we give the permission or access or grant. So authorization for the backend server. Okay, giving or providing access or permission or grants. So who will do authorization? Backend server. As per CISSP, as per security, what is meant by authorization? Who are you? Who are you? That's correct. Who are you? Okay, so that is about overall session management, authentication, and authorization. Interesting question: What is authorization? What is authentication? Authentication or authorization will come under which layer? Which layer? Layer five. Session layer. Five. Yeah, layer, layer number five, five as per YSS session layer. That is the answer. So here, data format is data only. So why data format is data only? I will explain the TCP/IP layer. I will explain the TCP/IP layer because session is establishing, and finally, okay, 
so in between user and also browser or application data is transferring that's why data format is data so now coming back so here also was top 10 will come because we are accessing the urls or websites or applications and also session hijacking what is flight hijacking flight hijacking uh, to compromise the flight and the passengers yes exactly so we have to compromise the flight so whoever is traveling so a so couple of places we will see afghanistan kazakhstan kyrgyzstan pakistan so terrorist people they have done the flight hijacking and so on okay don't take it in negative way just i am giving the example so session hijacking also will be done by hacker using man in the middle attack in between you and also water website or application you are accessing he will come as a middle person and he will hijack your session example maybe in flipkart or maybe in amazon.com you are placing one of the order so after placing the order so you will add to cart or maybe directly you will place you will place the order when you are placing the order it will go to payment option in the payment option whether we can use upi option or debit card option or credit card option or cash and delivery option and so on for suppose you are using upi option or maybe net banking or credit card or debit card option once you are clicking on that particular payment option it will redirect to third party payment gateway whenever that redirection is happened in the payment gateway maybe attacker he will come as a middle and he will take it to his particular server once you are doing the payment it will not go to amazon account or google i mean flipkart account it will go to hacker account that's why we have to implement sufficient controls ssl tls certificates input validation sql injection related attacks prevention csfr related attacks prevention otherwise our, our payment we will lose whenever you are doing any web browser access as i said so see here whether any red color symbol is there or lock symbol is there okay if it is red color symbol it's a very dangerous one don't trust those websites because there is no back end so trusted authority trusted authority once again this application security so i'm going too much in depth so that is about session layer so next layer is layer number 4 transport layer transport layer so what what is this transport layer transport is nothing but delivery delivery from one location to another location when you say one location meaning at one source to another source source to destination okay so that is called transport layer so how we can define this one now it will provide end to end communication without any errors and also with flow control with flow control without any errors there are no errors at all whatever messages we are sending everything it will reach in the perfect delivery without any errors okay so address spelling is wrong so that is called transport layer what is mean by without any errors what is mean by flow control i will explain now so what is the keywords here without any errors is one of the keyword we have to remember second flow control so data format is segments and datagrams and example attacks are sink flood attack all flooding category basically all flooding category of the attacks so far we discussed three different types of category what are those those three different types of category of the attacks 
anyone think to acknowledge no that no, i am not asking this one total three different category you are saying attack name so far we discussed three so was top 10 session hijacking and all flooding kind of attacks i am not sure yeah yeah category session hijacking also attack name so total three category of the attacks one category is malware category virus swarm trojan logic bomb adware spyware ransomware okay root kit mimi catch privilege escalation all those is one category second category is voice top 10 so under voice top 10 sql injection attack cross site scripting attack session hijacking broken authentication broken access control and so on that is second category third category is flooding category so in flooding category so there, there are different types of attacks will come one is sync flood attack one is tcp flood attack one is udp flood attack one is dos attack one is ddos attack there are so many arp flooding attack also so these are all part of flooding category of that all those flooding category will fall under transport layer so here dos and ddos is very very important denial of service denial of service as per ci triad which issue denial of service as per ci triad which issue is it availability yes perfect it's availability issue denial of service example whenever you are trying to access any website unfortunately that application is not available okay 404 error or maybe 504 error service is unavailable so as per cia triad confidentiality integrity and availability so denial of service it's a part of availability is availability issue as per cia triad i already told you discussed already this one it's a entire question so now so there are two different before going to two different types of protocols without any errors what is mean by that one example so here user a and user b user a and user b okay so give me one second i will go to snipping tool so before going to snipping tool i'll put here voice a layer channel so this for your diagrams okay so next one so just a simple way i am giving i am not putting any computer just you can consider user a so this is user a and this is user b so user a is sending one of the message in that message maybe early morning they met early morning they met and they are greeting each other that they are wishing each other so good morning hello how are you or how are you doing whatever it may be so in this scenario so here in between these two people it's a bidirectional communication so he sent 
how are you or good morning or whatever it may be how are you example so now so if this particular user b so everything is like a segmentation even transport layer will do segmentation also segmentation meaning here converting the larger chunks of the data into smaller chunks of the data larger chunks chunks means bigger data into smaller data okay so that is called segmentation or converting bigger data into smaller data that is called segmentation okay converting larger data into smaller data that is called segmentation so coming back here so how are you using entire sentence it's a bigger data if you want to convert this one into smaller segments okay that one we will segmentation now so what are three different types of segments now what are three different segments now what are three segments if you are converting how are you how how, how? R, okay. R, R, U. U. So these are all three different types of segments now. Every segment has segment ID and also port number and also acknowledgement number. Every segment has segment ID and also acknowledgement number and also port number also. Okay. So example, hello. Sorry, how? So how symbol is segment ID number one, and port number or record number may be one also. So R segment ID number is two. So R is two, and maybe acknowledgement number may be three, whatever it may be. U segment number is three. So for example. So one, two, three. Segment ID one, segment ID two, segment ID three. Segment ID one, segment ID two, segment ID three. So how is one? R is two. U is three. Okay. So now this data, whenever he is sending via email or maybe once he is conversing, so this user be received in the different way. Example. Three, one, two. What the answer? Three, one, two. You, you how you? are? How are? What is the meaning of you? How are? No, no meaning. There is no meaning. Correct. Whether this user B is able to understand you, how are? No. No. Okay. So one, two, three. How are you? so once user b said whenever he is receiving okay so he is receiving like a three one two segment ids three one two three means you so one means how so two means r u how r so there is no proper meaning there is no proper sentence meaning how user b is able to understand so that is called error control that is mean by error control without any errors what is the definition of transport layer transport layer will provide end to end communications without any errors error free control meaning here meaningful sentence can be provided meaningful messages can be provided that is mean by error free control or without any errors which protocol is doing or which layer is supporting this error free control transport layer transport layer that's correct transport layer so that is the one of the functionality second one is flow control third one flow control so example take this is your laptop take this is mobile take this is your personal laptop this is mobile so maybe you connected your usb cable and you want to copy the photos or videos from mobile to laptop vice versa laptop to mobile 
anything is possible so laptop maximum capacity is 16 gb speed maximum capacity of the laptop speed is 16 gb mobile capacity maximum speed is 4 gb or 8 gb consider 8 gb okay so now what is the what is the flow control so now so from laptop to mobile you are transferring some of the photos laptop to mobile you are transferring some of the mobile so with 10 gb laptop is sending is mobile i mean photos to mobile whether mobile is acceptable that much that much speed now i'm repeating once again no no so, laptop it is sending the speed with 10 mb to mobile so whether mobile will accept that much data no why sir 10 mb 10 gb sir 10. so sir 10 gb sir 10 gb guys sir 10 gb maybe this is 8 gb sir yeah it cannot why because maximum capacity itself 8 gb so now mobile will communicate to laptop my maximum capacity of the speed is only 8 gb but your transfer rate is 10 gb i am not able to okay so receiving water messages you are sending so flow control will happen between these two devices okay that is one way so now you can say another way mobile is traversing the data with 5 gb to laptop 5 gb to laptop okay so now whether laptop is able to accept it could sir yes yes it is accept yes. maximum capacity 16 gb you can send up to 16 gb i can accept it my maximum capacity 16 gb even 8 gb also you can send it i will accept it in between these two so control of the transfer data or flow will happen so that's why this is called flow control who is doing this flow control option transport layer transport layer that is mean by flow control and the error control error controls meaning without any errors with error free and flow controls meaning here so transferring the data within the limits without any leaking of the data so that is called error control and flow control okay so that is about overall definition point of view segmentation means meaning here converting the bigger chunks of the data into smaller chunks of the data flow control meaning here controlling of the data transfer rate and without any errors meaning here so there is i mean sender to receiver they will receive without any errors with proper sequence of the format of the data with meaningful way that is called without any errors or error free control so there are two different types of protocols will fall under transport layer what are those two protocols anyone we discussed already tcp and udp perfect tcp and udp transmission control protocol okay. udp means datagram protocol user datagram protocol user. yeah tcp will use segments data format udp will use datagram so that's why data format is segments and datagrams hope it's clear now so here data format is segments and datagram tcp will use segments and udp is datagram okay so tomorrow we will discuss tcp three way handshake tcp two way handshake tcp five way handshake it's one of the very 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 favorite inter question not only that one difference between tcp and udp okay that's all for today so as i said here so many inter questions we can make it so interview can ask in different ways different ways okay so please try to understand in engineering first year what whenever we studied that time we had we, we by hearted as well as we mug up and we have written the exam 
but now you can understand the concept okay so that's all for today guys do you have any questions okay thank you so much and good night see you tomorrow at 7 thank good you sir good night okay sir thank you sir good, good night. night thank you thank you sir good night